guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive. Welcome back to another video and welcome back to another case study. Right now I'm sitting in a 2010 Nissan Murano or Murano, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, it's got the uh, 3.5 liter V6 engine in it. Uh, customer complaint is that the vehicle is running rough. Uh, it shakes, it bucks, it jerks while she's driving and it's got the check engine light on. So let's go ahead and check out what the scan tool says. All right, so just to show you guys, the uh, check engine light is on right here. So let's go ahead and move over to the scan tool. All right, so looking at the scan tool, I've got the maxi sys hooked up. Uh, if you look over here, we have a PO171 and we have a PO174. Uh, it's just showing them multiple times here, but it's the same two codes. Uh, system too lean for bank one and system too lean for bank two. So I guess the first thing we could probably do is just check the freeze frame data, see if there's any useful information. I guess we can look at engine temperature and we can look at the engine RPM whenever the code was set. All right, so looking at the freeze frame data for PO174, as you can see, we were in open loop fault uh, for both banks. Looking at the calculated load value, engine cooling temperature, about 200 degrees. Looking at the uh, fuel trims, and they don't look very lean, but I'm seeing about 12. It looks like the engine RPM was at idle, and the vehicle speed, looks like the vehicle was not moving whenever this code was set. Air intake temperature 136 degrees, so it's pretty hot outside. I guess probably the next thing we can do is just go ahead and move over to the live data and see what the fuel trims say right now. All right, so the vehicle is running. Um, if you look here, the engine coolant temperature, we're at about 197 degrees. Uh, but what I really want to concentrate on are these fuel trims. So let's look at short term, long term for both banks. And uh, let's get engine RPM on there too. And let's see if we can get the mass airflow sensor on here. Oh, there it is airflow rate it's in pounds so let's go ahead and switch that over to grams per second which is what probably most of us are used to looking at and actually the engine is running really rough right now I just feel it out of nowhere it's starting to run really rough it was running smooth just a second ago but out of nowhere it just started running really rough so let's take a look at those fuel trims check it out we got 25 on the short term uh, on both banks bank one and bank two looks like our long terms are adjusting here idle is kind of high right now so we're looking at a little over a thousand rpm on the idle that's why the mass airflow sensor may be a little bit uh, elevated there it seems to be smoothing out it seems to be smoothing out right now but our fuel trims are still pretty high like I said looking at the idle it's idling pretty high it's up at about a thousand rpm the engine seems to be running smoother right now, but just a second ago it was running really rough. I think what I want to try next is I want to raise the RPM and hold it somewhere like around 3000 RPM and see what happens with these numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. All right, we're right about 3000 RPM, 2800. Looking at those fuel trim values. Fuel trims look pretty good right there. Seem to be getting better with the RPM up higher. I'm going to let off. Let it go back down to idle. I mean, the numbers look a little bit better now than they were a minute ago when the engine was running really rough. Uh, right now, it's not running so rough, but the fuel trim values are still pretty high. So let me go ahead and try to take this thing for a drive and see how it drives. All right, guys, so I'm going to take this thing for a quick drive. Already, I can feel this thing running pretty rough. I haven't even gotten on the road yet. I'm just trying to get out of the parking. try to get up and on the road oh now this thing is bucking this thing's bucking and running pretty rough let's uh keep an eye on the fuel trims I'm gonna try to get to a steady speed and hold it 
All right, so I'm holding it at a steady speed right now. I'm holding the throttle steady. Looking at the fuel trims, you can see that we're all the way up to 25 on both banks. This thing's running pretty rough. Feels like it's misfiring. It's jerking. Yeah, so this thing definitely was going lean there. Let's go ahead and get this thing back to the shop. All right, guys, so it's pretty obvious that we have a lean condition. Uh, but the big question here is, what is it we're dealing with? Are we dealing with a, a vacuum leak or are we dealing with an issue uh, where there's not enough fuel getting to the engine? So that's what we need to figure out. Again, taking a look at the scan tool right now, I'm in park, the engine is idling. If you look at the engine RPM, we're looking at around 1,000 RPM. Uh, the idle's sitting up pretty high. But if you notice that when we're in park and we're idling, it seems to be pretty happy. I mean, looking at the fuel trims, uh, they're kind of within a normal range. I mean, they're not uh, really high like they were before, really elevated. But there is something interesting I want to show you. I noticed that when I put this thing in gear, I got my foot on the brake. Take a look at those fuel trims. I'm not even moving. We're just in gear and I have my foot on the brake. But if you look, the uh, short term fuel trims have jumped all the way up to 25. The engine's running really rough. It's bucking right now. I'm going to go ahead and put it back in park. If you pay attention to the uh, engine RPM, you'll see we're going down to the 600s, 400s. And if you look at our mass airflow grams per second are dropping pretty low. This thing's running pretty rough. So I am curious if we may have an issue with the mass airflow sensor not reading properly. Anyways, I just find it interesting that when I put it in gear uh, and then I put it back in park, this thing just starts running really rough again. I'm going to go ahead and try to raise the RPM and see what happens. Got the RPM up to trying to hold it steady. Say around 3,800, 3,900. We're still running pretty lean there. Let's see if I can get this thing up to 4,000. I'm gonna hold it right about there, holding it steady. Looking at these fuel trim numbers, they don't seem to be getting any better. I'm gonna let off. Let it come back down to idle. All right, so after letting it come back down to idle, you can see that these fuel trim numbers look a whole lot better. The engine is running nice and smooth. So you can see it found its happy place. Again, we're in park. The engine is idling. Like I said, it idles pretty high. It's up at around 1,000 RPM. But this is where the engine seems to be really happy. Again, if you look at the fuel trim numbers, they look pretty normal. We're looking at around eight on both banks we got around 6.8 uh, grams per second on the mass airflow sensor so pay attention to these fuel trims i'm going to do this one more time i'm going to go ahead and put it into gear Oop. put it in drive got my foot on the brake engine starts running really rough our fuel trims jump way up we're at 25 once again idle starts coming down And just pay attention to the mass airflow sensor. All right, guys, so a really quick check I want to do is a wide open throttle check on the mass airflow sensor. So what we're doing is we've got the mass airflow sensor grams per second pulled up right now. And I'm going to go ahead and wind out first and second gear, which means I'm pretty much just going to floor it. We're going to see how high we can get the mass airflow sensor to read. So here we go. All right, guys, so looking at this graph, this is not what we should be seeing. Uh, what we should be seeing is something more of a straight line with a gradual increase, but instead it looks like the signal is dropping out. So we need to get this thing back to the shop so we can check out the mass airflow sensor. All right, guys, so moving under the hood, I already went ahead and took the engine cover off and I didn't find any obvious vacuum leaks. I mean, I checked all these hoses, the main uh, vacuum hose to the brake booster looks good. Uh, everything looks intact. I don't hear any vacuum leak. There's no loud hissing noise or anything. Um, I checked the intake boot. The intake boot is, is secured. But let me show you one interesting thing that I did find. And that is the mass airflow sensor is located right here. 
and I don't know if you can tell or if you can hear but the engine it's idling kind of high but it's running pretty smooth like it's not jerking it's not bouncing around it's not misfiring it's still running pretty smooth so let me show you what happens real quick when I move this uh, plug on the mass airflow sensor I don't know if you just heard that but the engine just stalled I don't know if you heard that but all I did was lightly touch this plug right here and the engine just stalled. Let me go ahead and try to start it back up. All right, so back inside the vehicle, let's go ahead and start this thing back up. Engine is running, let's go back under the hood. All right, engine seems to be running pretty smooth. I've got the scan tool over here. Look at that, we're looking at negative numbers now. We're looking at negative 25 on both banks. Now it's doing the opposite of what it was doing before. Sorry about the glare on the screen, but Hopefully you can see that. So right now, instead of running lean, we're actually running rich. Looking at the mass airflow grams per second down there at the bottom. Down at the bottom, you see that it's at zero grams per second right now. Mass airflow sensor is not reading. I'm gonna go ahead and try to wiggle the harness real quick. I'm just gonna wiggle it and see if this starts reading again. So we try to get somewhere where there's not any glare. All right, so hopefully that's a little bit easier to see. Uh, if you look down here, the airflow rate for the mass airflow sensor, uh, we're looking at zero grams per second right now. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and wiggle the harness. Let's just pay attention to that number. I'm gonna slowly, just gently, I'm gently gonna move it. And there we go, you see it's reading again. It definitely looks like we have a problem with the connector on this mass airflow sensor. Uh, I don't believe it's an issue with the mass airflow sensor itself because I'm not actually moving the plastic part all I'm doing is touching the wire part and I'm just gently moving it like this. So what I want to do is I'm going to pull this uh, I'm going to pull this cover back and we're going to take a closer look and see if there's an issue with the uh, with the wiring. If not, then there's probably a pin issue inside of this connector. All right guys, so really quick, I've got the wiring diagram pulled up over here. Got the mass airflow sensor, as you can see. It's a pretty simple setup. We have the uh, intake air temperature sensor that's built into it. We're not going to worry about these two wires. We're mainly focused on the mass airflow sensor and why we're dropping out. It's a pretty straightforward design. We have three wires. One of them is going to be the power feed, which is this red and green wire. That's our main power feed. We're going to have the brown, which is this green and black wire. And then we're going to have this signal wire, which is the orange wire. So what I want to do is I want to hook up my graphing meter and I want to see which one of these is dropping out. All right, guys, so moving back under the hood. Uh, one thing that I did do was I peeled back the uh, wire loom just a few inches behind the connector so I could see if there was any obvious signs of wiring damage but it all looks pretty good visually it checks out so I think what I want to do is I want to go down the line and I want to back probe uh, these three wires over here the two wires off to the side right here on the right side we're not going to worry about this blue and yellow and the green wire that's going to be for the air intake temperature sensor we're mainly worried about these three wires right here again we're going to check the power feed we're going to check the ground and then we're going to check the signal wire. We want to see which one of these is dropping out. So let's go ahead and start with the uh, power wire. All right, so I've got my back probe on that red wire. That's going to be our power feed to the mass airflow sensor. If you look over here in our graphing meter, uh, we have system voltage 13.35, so that's looking good. But one thing I want to show you is over here on the scan tool, uh, this is the data that I'm showing, live data on the scan tool. We're still showing zero volts, so even though we have power at the connector there, we're not showing any uh, signal getting to the computer here. So let's go ahead and move over to the ground wire. Make sure the ground is good. It's gonna be this green wire here. Moving over to the graphing meter. Get that glare off the screen. So you can see our ground voltage looks good. Let's go ahead and check the signal wire. All right, moving over to this orange wire. That's our signal wire. And looking at the graphing meter, we're, we're showing 1.62 volts. And moving over to the scan tool, we're not showing anything. We're still showing zero volts on that data pit. So obviously there's a problem here. We've got good power going to the mass airflow sensor. We have a good ground and we have a good signal, but the signal of 1.62 volts is not reaching the engine computer. So I guess what I want to try to do I want to wiggle the harness here and I want to see if anything drops out so I'm just gonna kind of move my hand up and down this wiring harness here and I want to see if 
uh, we get a voltage drop out so let's pay attention here and I'm kind of focused on both of them I'm focused on the graphing meter and on the scan tool over here so make sure you watch the scan tool we'll see if that voltage moves I'm just kind of lightly touching the wiring harness Whoa, something happened here all right so check that out uh, I came to this part of the wiring harness here and when I did that and I was moving it we now have the same voltage uh, showing on the data pit that we do on the graphing meter here so again we're showing 1.61 volts on the graphing meter and now we're showing the same thing here on the uh, scan tool so definitely there's a problem somewhere in this wiring harness initially I thought it was somewhere directly behind the connector or maybe inside the connector but now uh, if you notice again I was just kind of lightly touching the wiring harness here and when I got to this area right here we regained our voltage so let me just move it around and see if we can get that to drop back out oh yeah definitely there's a problem somewhere in the harness back here I'm gonna move it again there we go we get our voltage back move it again drops out move it again comes back and I'm just gonna push it back again and our signal drops out so there's definitely a problem in the wiring harness back here I'm gonna have to uh, probably remove this box here and the air intake hose so I can open up the wiring loom and see if we can find any damaged wires peeled back the wiring loom all the way down to the main harness here and so looking at this orange wire which is the signal wire that's dropping out I don't see any obvious signs of damage on the wiring uh, but I am suspect of this bend right here there is a, a plastic clip right here that hooks the wiring harness and the wiring just kind of bends right here so I think this is probably the only area of suspect that I'm looking at I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna pierce the wire uh, using a piercing probe like this if you look closely it's got a little bed of spikes in here and that's good for uh, piercing these thin wires like this and so what we're gonna do is we're going to kind of go down the line here we're gonna check it before and after the bend and we're gonna check to see if we have voltage drop uh, before or after the bend so that's gonna tell us where the problem is so if I just pick an area before the bend let's say right here got my piercing tool on there if we look over at the graphing meter we'll see we got 0.38 volts right now the engine is not running the key is on but the engine is not running uh, if you look at the scan tool you'll see that we do have voltage and I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of move the wiring around you see it dropped out but if you look over at the graphing meter we still have 0.38 volts so we know the wiring integrity from there is good so now we're gonna move the piercing tool over to somewhere after the bend which I'm just gonna grab it right here I got my piercing probe right here after the bend in the wiring and if you look at the graphing meter we're actually showing zero which is matching the scan tool I'm gonna go ahead and move the wiring around move it around see if we can regain our signal okay so if you look we've regained our signal well kind of lost it there for a second let me try to get it back all right so if you look we've regained our signal and if you look at the graphing meter we're showing 0.38 volts and if you look at the scan tool we're looking at the same thing so definitely there is a problem with the wiring integrity somewhere between these two points and like I said more than likely it's gonna be in this bend right here but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and replace the wire uh, all the way from here to there so that's gonna eliminate any problem in the wiring integrity from here to there so that's what we're gonna do next all right guys so first things first let's cut the wire I'm gonna cut it somewhere right over here and I'm just gonna cut it somewhere right down over here all right, now that we got that wire cut we can just kind of unravel it and when we replace this wire we're gonna need to make sure to wrap it around this wire too the same way that uh, this is done from the factory and there we have it all right so next up I cut a piece of 16 gauge wire I just cut it to length to match the old one and I gave it about an inch extra just for uh, room for error next up I'm gonna take these wire strippers we're gonna strip all of the ends 
on the wire. So let's start over here. Just gonna go ahead and strip the end off of this wire here, like so. Like that. Now we can pull that piece off. That end of the wire is stripped. Let's go ahead and do the other end down here. I'm gonna go ahead and strip this end of the wire there. There we go. All right, so I went ahead and did the same thing to this wire and I also put a couple pieces of heat shrink tubing on there. Now we're gonna go ahead and solder this on. This is actually the perfect opportunity for me to use my uh, new butane soldering torch that I got from Snap-on. I've had this uh, power probe butane torch forever and it's always worked really good. So figured it was time for an upgrade. Let me go ahead and pull this out of the package. All right, guys, so I just pulled this out of the package. This is my brand new soldering torch, uh, butane soldering torch from Snap-on. So you can see it comes with a bunch of different fittings. Uh, it comes with an extra connector here. And uh, it's a pretty neat looking tool, so I'm excited to use it. Also came with a little bit of solder. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, put some butane in this thing. Top this thing up. All right, so according to the instructions, it's pretty straightforward. It says load up with the gas, adjust the heat, and then slide the switch forward to ignite. And when you want to turn it off, slide the switch back to, to the off position. So let's go ahead and adjust the gas here. I'm gonna put it kind of somewhere in the middle. Then we just slide it forward. And ignite. Just let this thing heat up. I've already got the wire set up over here. It's ready to get soldered. So I'm just waiting for the soldering torch to heat up. All right guys, so I'm really not sure what's going on here. The torch does not want to ignite. Let me adjust the gas. Turn it up a little bit higher. Let me go ahead and shut this off and let me take this piece back off here. Take a look inside. I mean, it looks okay to me. It says on the package that you just line up these two white dots right here, get it aligned properly and then lock it down like that. And you should be able to just slide the switch forward and then hit the igniter and it should ignite. I hear the gas coming out but it just doesn't look like it's igniting. Let me try to switch out this uh, connector for the other one that it came with. All right, so in the package, uh, it comes with an extra one. So we're just gonna go ahead and remove this one. And we'll stick this one in. Again, we line up the lines here. Click it on. Adjust the gas. See if we can get this thing to ignite. All right guys, so I've been at this about 15 minutes now. I cannot get this thing to ignite. I've already been through two tankfuls of butane. I mean, it's coming out, but it's just not igniting no matter what I do. Uh, that's really disappointing. I was really hoping to use this tool. I just bought it. I thought it was real cool, but I guess we're just gonna have to stick to using the uh, old school power probe here. I'm going to go ahead and put some butane in this thing, get it started. And by the way, this is in no way a tool review of the Snap-on, uh, but it is just another example of how Snap-on just keeps letting me down. So I'm just going to have to talk to my dealer about getting this fixed. I mean, I might be using it wrong, but I read through the instructions uh, twice to make sure that I wasn't doing something wrong, but this thing is just, just does not want to ignite. So. And that's how quickly this one ignites. All right, so we're gonna get some solder melted on the tip there. Now we're gonna go down to the wire. And I'm just gonna start feeding solder here.
and just like that. Now we'll do the same to the other side. All right, so I've got the heat shrink tube on there. I'm just gonna use the uh, same soldering torch to uh, heat up this heat shrink. So you can see it does a really good job of shrinking that heat shrink. All right, so we got both ends of the wire soldered up. As you can see, I wrapped the signal wire around this green wire the way it was from the factory. So let's go ahead and put the wire loom back on and tape it back up. All right, guys, so we have everything back together. The vehicle is running right now. Again, like I said, we uh, went ahead and put the wire loom back on, got everything taped up, everything's back together. The engine is running. If you look at the scan tool, we got uh, 1.65 volts on the mass airflow sensor. I'm gonna go ahead and just start moving the wire back here in the area where we had the problem before. We're gonna see if our voltage is still dropping out. I'm moving the wire right now. I try to tug on it a little harder. So far, everything looks good. All right, guys, so now that we know that the wiring is fixed with the mass airflow sensor, we can go ahead and do the self-learning clearing. So if you go here, there's a little message that says this function allows self-learning control value to be cleared. Um, this is just something we wanna do to clear up the uh, fuel tables and all of the self-learn values. We're just gonna go ahead and clear them really fast. Hit start, completed. Now we can go ahead and start the vehicle up. We'll let this thing idle down for a second here. All right, so now that we got that taken care of, let's go ahead and take this thing for a drive. All right, guys, so I've been driving this thing for about 10 minutes now. Uh, so far, so good. Everything's running great. Engine's running smooth. So I definitely feel comfortable calling this a fix. Let's go ahead and get this thing back to the customer. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. And hopefully I was able to explain clearly enough my thought process and how I was able to figure out what the problem was. And hopefully this is information that you can use in diagnosing whatever it is you're working on anyways if you enjoy the channel please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this content please make sure to check out my other case studies you'll find some more useful information there if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and i appreciate every one of you watching thank you once again and i hope to see you in the next one